eight questions to ask yourself when you're planning your long-term time-lapse project. Question number one, how many photos should I shoot? What should my intervals be? Now the key here is to think about the change that you're documenting. If you're shooting a fast event like a concrete pour happening on site, then you're going to want to be shooting fairly fast because lots of change is happening. But most of the time for a long-term time-lapse project, the change you're documenting is the construction taking place and that happens slow. Other factors that are going to influence how often you take photos is what are your client's expectations of how often they want a photo uploaded and what's your data usage. Which leads us to our second question, which is how much data do I need for the project? Now this is a simple calculation that we just recommend that you sit down, take the time to work out your file size, how many photos you're going to be taking, how many photos you're going to be uploading, how much data do I need? So take the time to figure out how much data you're going to upload so that you don't get to the end of the month and realize, oh no, I've uploaded a lot more data than I planned and I have a huge data bill. We made a video to help you out. Go ahead and check it out. The third question to ask yourself when planning your long-term time-lapse project is, what are my storage requirements? Are you going to be shooting small JPEGs and uploading each of those to the cloud and so therefore you don't have uh, large onboard storage requirements? Or are you going to be uploading JPEGs but also shooting RAW and saving those locally? In which case, you do need large onboard storage. Not every system out there has the capability of having a large drive of onboard storage, so make sure you plan that out and work out what you're going to need. Now the fourth question you need to be asking yourself is where am I going to be putting this long-term time-lapse equipment? And there's two elements to this, how can I get the best shot and where can I install the camera? So to get the best shot, you obviously want to install your camera somewhere where it's going to get a nice view of the construction site. Preferably direct front on or at a 45 degree angle, that'll give you a nice shot. You also want to consider where the sun is, not just on the day you go scouting, but where it is at different times of the year. And that also influences where you can put your solar panel. Long term time lapse generally looks better if the camera is up high, looking down, and you want to make sure that you account for the full height of the construction when it's finished. So if you're looking at a bare piece of dirt before construction begins, make sure you visualize how high the final building is going to be and plan where you put your camera accordingly. Secondly, with the installation, as much as possible, you want to make this easy to access. And that's because you're going to need to be performing site maintenance throughout the project and you don't want to have to pay for a scissor lift every time you have to visit the camera. Speaking of maintenance, the fifth question you should ask yourself is, have I planned for maintenance? Now obviously, we would love it if nothing ever went wrong and you never had to visit the camera, but the reality is, you stick a camera out in the wild for 12 months, two years, three years, chances are, Murphy's Law, something's gonna go wrong at some stage. A spider may build a web over the glass, the glass may simply get dirty, or you are working with technology, you may need to go out and troubleshoot it occasionally. So you should plan maintenance visits into your budget so that when it happens, it's not a shock and it's not eating into your profits. As a general rule, we recommend you plan for a maintenance visit roughly once every two to three months. The other thing you can do to help you with maintenance is to have in your contract with your client a requirement that they provide someone who's on site to be your contact. That way, if there's some really simple maintenance that's required, like just cleaning the glass, you can actually call them up and get them to go and do it. Now the sixth question you should be asking yourself is what are the power requirements for my project? Now for most projects, a 20 watt solar panel with our system is satisfactory, but if you need to take photos more frequently, maybe AC, as long as that's an option, would work well. We also do have an external battery box, which increases the life of the internal battery by weeks and even months. Question seven, how am I gonna make the final time-lapse movie more interesting? And you need to be thinking about this from the start because one of the best ways to make it more interesting is to cut it together with B-roll. So there's going to be opportunities throughout the whole project to be shooting aerial footage, to be shooting slow motion of guys doing welding, to be shooting talking head with investors or project managers, anything you can get that you can cut in and make the final video more interesting. It's also great to have personal contact with the project manager who can tell you when significant events are going to happen on the construction site, like a concrete pour because on those days you're going to have a lot more action, you're going to have more guys on site, you're going to have something interesting happening much faster, and it's great if you can change your intervals to be much faster and capture some short-term time-lapse of that. That's going to make your end video more interesting too. Now the eighth and final question to ask yourself is have I tested my time-lapse equipment? Now we recommend that you have at least 48 hours with the configuration that you plan on using before you go out on site. 
Now this is because the last thing you want is to be up a pole with the configuration set up and realizing it's not working the way you'd like it to. So take the time, test the equipment before you put it on site. So that's eight questions to ask yourself when planning your long-term time-lapse project. We've got a raft of other resources you can use to help with that. Make sure you watch our other videos. And of course, anytime you can contact us and talk to one of our experts who can take you through planning your project step by step.